Hey, Kevin here, and I just wanted to show you our tiny kitchen in a tiny house hack. And so what I, what I want to kind of show you here is that you can move in before you're finished if you need to, if, if, if necessity dictates, and still function inside the space before you're finished out. And so just wanted to kind of walk you through what we were doing and how we're getting away with this. And, and just, you know, what we're going to do as we go forward and some of the, the benefits of doing this and some of the cons of doing this. So whatever you do, don't forget to subscribe and like this. If you give us a thumbs up, that'd be awesome. Uh, ring the little bell so that when we get a new video up, you're going to get a shot at that right off the bat. So we talk a little bit more about our space here and just give you some idea of, of uh, the functionality. So this is our, our kitchen kind of an alcove. It's it's pretty compact space. Um, the back wall here is six and a half feet long or wide and then this wall which is the bathroom wall is six feet and then the wall over here which is the outside wall on, on this side of the kitchen is about you know seven feet out to here so and then our, our, we're going to put a refrigerator right off, off that edge. So that just kind of gives you a little bit of scale. You can see that we're, we're using plywood for the walls. This is what we did on our last home and we really liked it. We didn't like, we don't like sheetrock and so the plywood was something that we could put a clear coat on and, or you could stain it, you know, just depending on your preference. And uh, it comes out real nice and then we'll trim it out with a nice uh, wood trim that'll probably be a darker color just to give it a contrast. So what we're doing in here, if I can get kind of out of the way so mm -hmm. we can get the camera in, I'm gonna step into the, the door here, is make and do. And so what we did was we just are using what we had. We didn't get fancy here. We didn't go out and spend a bunch of money to make this work. We're just using what we've had in the past. So and what's this table over here, Kevin? Talk about this. So, so this is my DeWalt work table. It's a fold up table that I can use when I'm uh, working doing my carpentry and, and woodworking and so it's a it's a real sturdy table and and it, it's a push button and the legs fold up inside and the handle moves in and i think it'll hold like i don't know 1500 pounds or something crazy like that so it's pretty tough and it was just a, something i already had and so we're making use of it I, I was using it during the build process and then when we got to a certain point i brought it in here to use as some counter space because we we don't mm -hmm. have any and uh so what we're doing over here is this is our current water situation we got a little five gallon jug and then this is a, a kind of a cool thing we found this is just a little uh, water pump with a line and it's uh, battery operated but it's rechargeable and so it's got a little usb port on the back and you can charge that up and then it does a really good job of i mean we haven't recharged it yet we've been using it for two weeks yeah so it's had I'm going to say 15 gallons of water cycled through this pump so far and it's still running. So, And we'll put links below. We actually just ordered that off Amazon. Yeah. So, so this, is, this has been pretty handy because it's kind of our, our kitchen faucet and our water supply. And, uh, and then we just have some boxes here that are sort of the catch-alls for various uh, food. And, um, you know, we got our coffee in there and some bowls and some cooking utensils and uh, some other food items down in there. And so that just kind of containing things and giving us a little mm -hmm. bit of space here to work so we can prep our food or whatever mm -hmm. and then we have gallon jugs that we carry to refill this jug um, and then we also use these if we're just pouring water like into a another container this pours a little faster than that and so that gives us you know without too much weight to have to pick up because that mm -hmm. full weighs 40 pounds and so that was what we were doing and then we got some uh some sacks and some uh, grocery reusable grocery bag down there and then, and then we got some you know other food stuffs over here on the floor that can tolerate being down there so <laughs> over here again just making do with what we had this is a little camp table that we've had in our van for I don't know a couple of years and it folds up and so the the two halves of the table fold and the, and the legs pop up and fold up inside of it so it kind of kind of turns into a briefcase sort of a thing and so it's kind of compact to put out of the way but makes for a nice table and it's designed to have a camp stove on you put it over here on the on the metal side uh, and then use the plastic side for 
prep and so forth and so we just brought it in here to use and, and then uh, extended our, our uh, space a little bit by throwing this uh, scrap sheet of plywood up here to make it a little bit wider because again counter space is, is precious in a, sm in a small area like this and so uh, we have a microwave which we don't use that much mm -hmm. um, every once in a while to uh, cook some potatoes off really fast or something uh, or reheat defrost meat something like that um, we, we're limited in power right now we only have uh, one 20 amp circuit for all our power needs in here and so this we have to kind of balance what we're using and when we have a, a heater in here also that runs off the electricity and so I don't think we could run them both at the same time without popping the circuit which means a trip out side up the hill to the uh, electric meter so anyway got some spices up here just kind of and then I would say this is a um, what do you want to see call this uh, a abbreviated kitchen scenario if you will um, just not a lot of uh, room for you know everything that we like to have so we're just using the the bare minimum uh, accoutrements to, keep to <laughs> cooking right now so just a little bit of spaces again we don't have any real storage space so we're just you know kind of stacking everything wherever we can and keeping it as handy as possible but mm -hmm. our main cooking is, is using this uh, little camp stove and we've had this camp stove for over 30 years and it's older than my kids and it's just it's just a little Coleman stove and it, it just it's just bulletproof they, they just don't wear out and so that's been our we've had that thing in, in numerous uh, builds over the years it's, it's our cooking stove for when we're out in our van going camping and traveling and whatever so I mean it's just been been a, a, a trooper for taking care of things and you know we got a five gallon bulk tank down here instead of the little one pound deals because they just they're, they're expensive and they don't last very long and so this is refillable and it, yes it's not supposed to be inside and so you have to be careful with that so we only usually eat once a day uh, maybe make some coffee in the morning so we just turn the valve off and make sure that it's not left open while we're not using it and that kind of keeps it down to a minimum and uh, we have it right next to the kitchen window yeah so we're vented more or less um, and so yeah so we got a little bit of uh, gear here we got our trash bag and and you know just just kind of a bare minimum so what's nice about this the pro is um, and we found this out uh, kind of inadvertently on our last build at, on the beach house it's nice to get in the space and use it for a while before you kind of settle in on what it is you need or, or you think you want Because you might have an idea oh yeah this is what I want all these cabinets and I want all this you know business in here and maybe you find out well that's really not necessary and um, maybe you, you find yourself uh, once you've been in the space for a while you start changing your mind on some of the things you thought you wanted to do or thought you needed and so that happened to us throughout our build process at the beach house and that's been going on here now too so we, we've got some cabinets and we're going to be putting them in we haven't bought them all and because we just didn't know how many cabinets we wanted to put in here and we're limited on you know obviously space as far as how many and this is a short ceiling it's uh, uh, seven, seven and a half feet rather than eight and so when you put upper cabinets mm -hmm. in here typically they come in a, in a regular and a, and a tall size and so the tall size are going to be a lot longer coming down and that might get in the way of your counter space and especially in an area like this we had tall cabinets in the beach house but we had full ceiling and so that worked out good because it gave us a little more storage but in here we're probably going to use the shorter uppers and, and then we're going to have to decide where we want them and so and if we want them we're not even sure we're yeah trying to and so that. the other thing we thought when we first built this was we're gonna you know we're just going to load this up and, and counters and go all the way around and 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 maximize all the space in here um and, and now we're not too sure if we're going to do that plus we're being frugal with this um, cabinets aren't cheap even the cheap cabinets aren't cheap and we we got some uh, unfinished ones that we just off the shelf cabinets that you can buy at the big box store because if you order them and have them made they're, they're going to be more expensive and so and take weeks yeah definitely i mean you're looking at uh upwards of six weeks to get cabinets in, in some of these uh styles and designs that they're they're selling in the stores so anyway we, we went down we picked out 
the cabinets that will fit across this back wall and a countertop and then we're going to put our uh, kitchen sink right here and then we're going to have a nice counter space right here now again pretty limited and so we're going to have to pick and choose so one of the things that's going to happen is the microwave is going to sit over here on top of our refrigerator we have a little 10 cubic foot refrigerator that'll sit about this high it's like five feet so right about here mm -hmm. and then I, I put in a plug outlet up here so that when we set the microwave up it, it can be plugged in right there and then the other outlet down here for the refrigerator mm -hmm. so we can have that so that's going to sit right about here we're mm -hmm. not sure exactly but right in here somewhere to, de be, to be determined and it's not in here yet because we don't have the power for it and, and it just be in our way and then we're going to decide whether we want to put some more cabinetry and maybe another piece of a countertop over here or if we want to do a portable or a move around mm -hmm. the one like we had in the beach house is a stainless steel on wheels it's got a nice countertop and then a, a lower shelf and it's movable so if, if it kind of gives us a little flexibility to go back and forth in the space and uh, we like that at the other as an island in the other uh, place so that's kind of going on and then you can't really see them very well but there's an outlet right here and then there's another outlet right here behind the microwave can I give you a little move there and so those are for the countertop obviously and those are for our countertop appliances and we're going to be very selective about our countertop appliances again because they take up space so it's going to be what's going to enhance our ability to cook and have more a variety of ways of cooking things and and yet still not so we have to, it's it's a give and take of space versus versatility so we haven't figured out what we're going to do yet but probably at least a little toaster oven because that'll give us an oven we don't have an oven we've been just cooking on a cooktop for a while it'd be kind of nice to have a little oven to have a little bit different uh, things we can do with cooking and then the last outlet in here is this one down here and that will wind up underneath the kitchen sink but that's going to be for our little hot water tank that's going to sit under there and, it, and we have a little two and a half gallon on-demand tank so it's not uh, it only makes water hot water when we're using it it's not storing hot water so it's uh, pretty efficient and it runs on 110 so that was another thing we thought would be nice because many you know many of the other hot water tanks are, are going to be 220 volt that's a lot of power and so that was that's going to serve our our hot water needs for this sink as well as for the shower in in the other room so anyway we're going to go out and get some cabinets and we'll bring them in we'll get all this stuff out of the way and then we'll show you what we're working on here as far as the design and you can kind of see what the cabinets look like okay we got the space emptied out so you can kind of see what we have here is an open space and we measured across here it's is about six and a half feet and so we went down and just they make cabinets in different sizes and we came up with the arrangement that gave us the most bang for the buck as far as cabinetry fitting in here again off the shelf so we have a three foot sink base for our, our kitchen sink right here and then we've got two other pieces one is an 18 inch three drawer and then a two foot which has got does it have a drawer in it? I think it's got one drawer and one cabinet opening underneath and so we'll figure out whether we want the drawer the three drawer here or over there but they'll they'll take up right at about I think it's about two inches left over two and three quarters something like that so pretty tight it'll have a little filler strip so it'll look just nice and solid when we're all said and done and uh, so we're going to bring the first one in so you can kind of see the, the process unfold okay so what we got to do here is is you know form meets function meets um tiny space um meets budget okay so these are definitely budget cabinets they're off the shelf cabinets and so they're pre-made to common sizes and and so you, you need to do one of two things i guess you need to maybe have the foresight to design this space before you build or you work with what you have and then you 
fit what fits in the space and so in this case we stood there in front of all the different sizes that they had and looked at them and said okay what what do we need to function in here and within our budget so with these three pieces and the countertop we bought which was a pre-made for mica we paid 512 dollars okay that's what we've got so far so we're going to cut the cabinet or the counter it comes in either a they come in six eight and i think 12 foot pieces so this is six and a half feet so we want to buy an eight footer we got to cut about 18 inches or 16 inches or something like that off and so we can fit it in here because we want to maximize our counter all the way across you also want to take into consideration knowing what the height and, and measurements of these basic cabinets are so that you, you you can set your counter in here on top of it and not interfere with like putting in these outlets and so I know I have a, a backsplash that's going to come up right underneath here so I need enough room for this thing to sit above there and put my cover on without it bumping into my uh, top of my backsplash. Hopefully I did that right because I was literally winging it. But I knew these are um, 34 and a half inches tall standard. That's a standard cabinet height. And then you got a couple inches of cabinet or a countertop depending on whether you're using a, a Formica pre-made or if you go with say one of the butcher blocks which is pretty popular right now they're thicker they're inch and a half or two inches thick and and so that's going to raise your your height of your overall finished you know space and then when going with the formica which is probably less than half the price of the butcher block um you're going to have a backsplash the, bo the butcher blocks don't you can make one but they don't come with one and so that's going to roll up the back here so we need to know that before we set those heights same thing with my window if i decide to put some counter over that way then i need to know how high my windowsill is and you can see that what i kind of was thinking about to begin with was the butcher block top and we just decided not to spend the money on it in, in the space that would have done like we did in the kitchen in the other house would have rolled right into and become part of the windowsill and that would have kind of looked cool just to be you know seamless that way with a, a cut off piece that we put in there for filler so anyway this is what we got so far so we got this counter or this you know the sink base which gives you a lot of under underneath storage um, but we're going to have a little tank over here in the corner taking up some of the space and then some plumbing hanging down but you got a lot of room in there for a lot of, a lot of stuff this space this is the 24 inch so this is three, 24, and 18. And this has got a little shelf you can, it comes with, so you get a little half shelf that sits in there. Plus we got a nice big drawer. So that gives us a lot of storage there for, you know, pots and pans and whatever. And then three drawers, two big ones and a smaller one over here. So we've got space for silverware and, and you know, smaller items that'll fit in the drawer, maybe, you know, containers and what have you so I think we got a little bit of the best of both worlds a mix of the three basic cabinets here they make 12 inch cabinets they make 15 inch cabinets the two footers the three footers they do make some 32s which would be a bigger version of this it's got a drawer in it like this so um, I, I would have preferred possibly because we're only putting a single bowl sink in here uh, maybe a shorter than a three foot cabinet on this side and maybe a bigger over here with the drawer and and so forth that didn't work out because the 32s have a uh, upper drawer in them so that doesn't work well when you're putting the sink in. So these are birch uh, birch hardwood faces and again most cabinets until you get into some higher grade cabinets are going to all the back pieces and, and everything else is going to be particle board with a uh, sort of a photo finish or it's not even a veneer it's just a paperback that mock wood grain it's all hidden underneath the cabinet so you're not really looking at it but it just gives you uh, a little bit of a water resistant finish I mean if, you, if water stands on it for a while it will soak in but that's standard cabinetry um, we got to level these we got to uh, screw them together and then attach them to the wall and then we can cut our countertop to fit and then we're also going to have to cut 
the hole for the sink so we can drop that in so that's that's a really basic sort of a galley kitchen I guess setup and, and we'll probably put some uppers in we just haven't decided what we're gonna put up there wanted to get this in see what it feels like I think some uppers would be nice I mean you can put your dishes up there you can put your spices up there you know things like that that you can get out of the way um, maybe not a full upper in front of the sink they're 12 inches deep so they're half as deep as these these are 24 inches deep these are 12 inches deep standard so that's kind of what we're playing with so uh, we'll get the uh, counter cut and bring it in and we'll let you see what it looks like all right so we set all the cabinets in they're not fitted in we just dry fit them in here just to see how they laid out and we also went ahead and cut and dry fit the countertop so again it's not attached and we still have to cut out the hole for the sink but we just want to see how everything fit in here and make sure we cut it to the right dimension and and we still need to finish the cabinet so these are a birch uh, face and so they take stain real well and I think we're gonna go with something darker that matches the trim around the windows and doors and so forth and so that'll be a good contrast because we're gonna just clear coat this so that'll be lighter and then we're going to have a uh, floor covering is going to basically be between the two so it's going to be a, a medium brown uh, and this will be a darker and then this will be a lighter so I think it will make a nice uh, contrast between and then we'll, we're going to get some upper cabinets I think we're, we've already kind of figured out we want some more cabinet we thought about putting shelves in and we may put a little bit of shelving in here too but we definitely like the idea of putting some upper cabinets in there for a little more storage space so we're gonna have to pull this back out cut out the hole for the sink we need to stain these and then attach them and, and level them up and put them up against the wall and then reinstall the counter so that'll be the next uh, part of the project